Is there something about who you were as a teenager that's still affecting your life today? Probably. But most of us don't realize that this is the case. A study was done by a group of economists. They were interested in understanding why it is that some people make more money than others. They had a huge database, 20,000 men in the UK. They looked at all kinds of predictors of earning potential. But what they found was kind of surprising. It turns out that men's height is related to their salary. Taller men earn more money than shorter men. But it wasn't how tall these men were in their 30s that predicted their salary at that same age period. It was how tall they were at the age of 16 that mattered the most. The study tells us that there's something about who we were back then that is still affecting us today. It's still somehow playing a role deep inside us. Of course, when most of us think back to high school, we don't really think about our height. What most people think of when you ask them to talk about adolescence was popularity. Almost everybody, no matter how many years it's been since you've graduated high school, can remember the names of the most popular kids in their grade, and also where we stood on the social hierarchy. Psychologists have been interested in studying, is it also the case that our popularity in high school is still affecting us for the rest of our lives as well? Well, psychologists have found some surprising results, and that's because there are actually two very different types of popularity. One type of popularity is likability, and it's good for us. In fact, we're only now just learning how powerfully po our likability can affect us. The second type of popularity is status, and status is bad for us. In fact, it can even be dangerous to us. And that's particularly important right now, because for the first time in the history of our species, we are starting to become confused about these two different kinds of popularity. Remember back in kindergarten, when you were running around on the playground? You might remember that there were some kids that everyone wanted to spend some time with, but there were other kids that might have been excluded or playing by themselves or rejected. This is a measure of likability. And even back then, at that early age, psychologists can reliably measure who is most well-liked. Now, unless we do anything to change the way that we get along with others, which we can, by the way, quite easily, then this form of popularity sticks with us for decades. Likeability is based on how much we make others feel happy, valued, and included. And the way that this works in kindergarten is not altogether different from the way that it works in high school, the way that we get along in our office, the way that we meet new friends or romantic partners in our personal lives, or even how we do within our community circles. It's remarkably important that we think about the power of likability, because not only are those who are most likable more likely to be hired, promoted, make more money, and they report more happiness and fulfillment in their lives. But our likability also affects our likelihood of contracting diseases. A recent meta-analysis or a synthesis of prior studies revealed that those who lacked close and supportive relationships were twice as likely to die as those who had positive social experiences that typify likable people. Now, that's an incredibly powerful association. In fact, it's so powerful that psychologists have looked at what other health risks might predict our mortality as strongly as peer rejection. And the only factor that comes as close is smoking 20 or more cigarettes a day. So likability is very important. A lot of people wonder how it could be that how much others like us could play such a big role. Well, actually, the way in which we socially interact with others has a whole lot to do with why it is that our species survived and why it is that we're all sitting here today. 
60,000 years ago, we were not the only human-like species on the planet. There were many intelligent hominid species who honestly should have made it. No one would have bet on us to survive. We were weaker, we were smaller, we were more fragile and less resilient. But there was one thing that we had, one advantage, and that was a small mutation that changed the shape of our larynx. And with that small change, we were able to develop language. Language made us into a social species. As a herd, we were able to work together, share with one another, share tools and cooperate and protect one another. Soon, the extent to which you were in the herd was associated with your survival. If you were kicked out or ostracized, you were at much greater likelihood of serious injury or death. Now, a lot of people today say that they don't care about whether they're popular or not, but science tells us that we deeply are concerned at a biological level about what other people think about us. In the moment after we are rejected by peers, fMRI research tells us that our brain sends its most powerful warning signal, motivating us to change our behavior and do whatever we can to get back into the herd. Our likability even affects the expression of our DNA. Research tells us that within 40 minutes of being dumped, fired, teased, or excluded, dormant DNA in all of our cells turns on to protect us from injury. That inflammation response that's turned on is, of course, not needed today. If we're unfriended on Facebook, we're unlikely today to be attacked by a woolly mammoth. <laughs> However, our bodies are built based on what we experienced millennia ago. And that inflammation response in our DNA leaves us susceptible to more inflammation-related diseases as well as depression. So likability is very important. But that's not the type of popularity that we learn about in high school. Changes in our brain around the pubertal transition instead make us very focused on status. Status is based on how much everybody knows who we are, how much we're prestigious and dominant and powerful and visible. Now, most adolescents who are very high in status are actually very disliked by their peers. But adolescents pursue this type of cool nevertheless because the parts of their brain that are related to addicted, addictive pleasure and social bonding become supercharged at around the age of 11 or 12. So yes, our kids are biologically programmed to think that their parents have become like totally lame as soon as they hit puberty. And instead, they pursue status. Now, it used to be that we grew out of this desire for status as soon as we graduated high school. But in today's society, we are focused more on status than ever before. We've even developed digital platforms that allow us to mouse click for status 24-7. And that's a concern, because when research has followed those really cool high-status kids from high school and seen how they're doing decades later, it's not a happy ending. Those kids who were the highest in status and those who are pursuing status are at much greater risk for relationship difficulties, anxiety, depression, addictions, and they're even less likely to keep their jobs. But in today's society, we have confused status and likability. We spend more time and energy thinking about how to make ourselves stand out within the herd, rather than how to create real, authentic, close communication and connections with others, or how to develop a sense of community. This is a big concern for all of us, but it might especially be a concern for today's teenagers who know of no other world than the one that we have given them. How popular were you back in high school? Were you someone that everyone liked? Were you someone that was desiring for more status? We have a basic human instinct that makes us interested in how other people think about us. And every day, we have an opportunity to make a choice. Science tells us that the best way to achieve happiness and success 
is not to make the choice to try and increase our standing above all others in our society, but to do what we can to make everyone feel welcome and included in our herd. Thanks. Thanks.